Hey there, Lisa. It's been a while since you and I got to talk, right? I was just curious if you had finally found a date to have your wedding on. Hello there, Anne. It has been a while since you and I have last talked, hasn't it? And actually, yes. We just so happened to settle on a day to have our wedding out a few days ago, thanks for asking. It is going to be on October the 28th at 1 in the afternoon. Of course, I'll send you an invitation with all of this written on it beforehand. But I really do hope that I can see you there. Wow, so you finally nailed down a date! I was thinking you guys were never going to narrow it down. Well, that is huge then. I just have to say congratulations on that, Anne. That's really stellar. Well, I can't really say that I blame you for wondering when it was finally going to happen. After all, Troy and I have been engaged for two years now. I know Mom and Dad have been really wanting us to hurry up and just get married already. Well, still, either way, this is some great news, and I'm really happy to hear that this is all working out for you, sis. And I just know the family is going to be excited to finally have an excuse to gather everyone and have a big reunion. Not to mention all the booze that you're going to have at the wedding. <laughs> you're not wrong about that. If there's one thing that's been a constant at every single family reunion, it's been a lot of drinking. Yeah, but anyways... Have you decided what kind of a wedding you're going to have? Like, is it going to be themed after anything, or are you going to go for something a bit more unique? After all, this is only something that you do once, so you have to make the most of it. I mean, do you remember the fireworks display that I had for my wedding last year? Yeah, that really was something. I still go back and watch the videos I took from that day because it was so amazing. Well, what if you tried doing some big display like that? I bet all the guests who showed up would love to be treated to something like that. Hmm, I don't know. I loved your wedding, but I think I might just try and keep it a bit more basic. I don't want to go over the top or anything, you know? What? You're kidding me, right? I, you mean you don't want to go all out for your special day? No, I totally respect people doing that, but it's just not my style. You know that I've never really liked sticking out or anything like that. Besides, just as long as it's a ceremony that mom and dad can enjoy, that's what my real goal for it is. They were actually messaging me the other day wondering whether or not I had already found a wedding dress. But I don't get it. Why wouldn't you want to throw the most spectacular wedding that you possibly could? I put so much effort into mine to make sure that it was basically like a big party. And it was a big party too, and everyone had a great time. Your wedding was amazing, Anne. It really was. But I guess everyone just wants different things for their big day, you know? And I've always been a fan of keeping things simple, so... Well, sure, but if you're really going to have such a boring wedding, then all the guests are going to be really bored the whole time, don't you think? I mean, isn't it better to plan something that everyone is going to be excited for? Besides, everyone knows that only poor people have boring weddings. Hmm, you really think so? Because I don't really think that anyone likes spending more money than they have to for something. I'm sorry, sis, but you're sounding really, really poor right now. It's kind of cringy. Like, I can tell that you're poor because people with means don't think in such stingy ways. I really don't think that one thing has to do with the other at all. I mean, just take me, for example. Not only did I have a crazy, extravagant wedding, but then we went all out for the honeymoon, too. Now that's how you get married. Yeah, well, I'm glad that you had the means to do all of that. That's right, and that's what separates us from the normal and poor people. After all, my husband makes over a million dollars a year. And it's all thanks to my husband making those big bucks that we were able to do all of that. Okay, well, it's like either Troy or I are poor, you know? I just think that maybe we're not as driven by material things as you are. In fact, we were really just thinking of inviting family and close friends while trying to keep it as small as possible. Don't you think that's just sad, though? I mean... You're the star of the show that day, and yet you're trying to make it so that you're barely even the center of attention. If only you were marrying someone rich like I did, then you might get what I'm saying a little more. I really don't think that's the case. I'm just not interested in having a wedding like that at all. This is something I've talked over with my fiancé and that we've both agreed to. We really just don't care about having an expensive wedding. One of these days, you are going to have to learn that money is what makes the world go round. And you might have learned that lesson earlier if you had married Rich. We may look alike because we're sisters, but you and I are actually complete opposites. 
Okay, well, I really don't want to be talking about the budget of our weddings anymore. I mean, you had your wedding, and it was great. I'll have mine, and it'll be great too. Can't we just agree on that? I'm sorry, but now if my wedding is great, then your wedding is going to be a boring drag that people will be falling asleep through. I really don't want you to compare my amazing wedding to this lame show that you're trying to put on. Can you at least make sure the food is good then? Sure thing, I can do that at least. Were you going to be bringing your husband to my wedding? Of course we're both going to show up there. I know that my husband is busy with all his enterprises, but I asked him to set aside some time for this a while ago. Well, I'm sorry that it took us this long to get a date down, but hopefully he's ready to take the time off. Anyways, when we have them printed, I'll send you the invitations. And tell your husband we look forward to seeing him there too. Lisa, are you there? It's just awful. Things are really bad at the chapel. Things are bad? What do you mean? What is going on over there? The wedding is about to start. I know, but this crazy lady burst into the wedding and now she won't leave. A crazy lady? What do you mean? Does she know anyone there? Who is she? What is she doing? Is she bugging the other guests or something? I don't know who she is at all, but she keeps running around the chapel yelling cheater and homewrecker. The staff are here trying to corral her into a corner, but it's a serious scene over there. What does that mean? Why would she be shouting those things at my wedding? I don't get it. I have no idea. Someone tried to talk her down and she just kept going on about how we were all here for a cheater's wedding. She even demanded to see the bride-to-be. But that wouldn't mean that she's talking about me, right? I mean, I don't know what she's talking about, but I guess that would be you. So this lady is calling me a homewrecker? I, I don't get it. I haven't done anything like that in my life. Seriously, what is going on? Who is this person? I have no idea, but they are seriously crazy, and someone needs to be here to deal with this person. She is super scary, though. She's got that crazy glint in her eyes, you know? Lisa, for your own safety, I think you should get out of here right now. You have to run away from your own wedding. So you're telling me all the ruckus I was hearing from the changing room was this person, then? If she's really that bad, then we need to think about this. Because chasing her off might just make things worse for us later. But then what are we supposed to do? How are we supposed to deal with someone like this and make sure the wedding goes off? Okay, well, I think the first thing that we need to do is focus on calming this lady down. Don't try and chase her out or anything. Just put her in a waiting room. I have no idea who this lady is, but I think nothing is going to get down until she calms down. I'm sure there's some kind of misunderstanding here. So tell her that if she calms down, that I'll agree to talk to her. But don't you think that could be dangerous? Why in the world would you want to talk to this lady at all? Well, because I know that I've never done any cheating in my life, so this woman has got the wrong person. I have no idea why she thinks that I'm the woman she's looking for, but I want to explain to her that it's not me and that she needs to forget all about what she's doing. I really think that this is a bad idea, sis. I mean... Don't you think it would be just easier to chase her away and make sure she never comes back? Just leave this to me, okay, Anne? I've dealt with similar situations in my line of work, so I'm used to this. I suppose that's true. I sometimes forget that you're a crisis counselor. Well, I am. And in my experience, chasing people in this mindset off without trying to calm them down can often be the most dangerous thing to do. Especially for the distressed person. So let's just calm this woman down and then I'll go and talk to her. Well, okay. If that's really how you want to handle this, then I'll tell the staff that. It'll be fine, Anna. I'll just make sure that I have someone with me when I go to talk to this woman. I really am sorry to drag this out like this. Also, has anyone been hurt? There haven't been any injuries caused by this woman, right? No, I think everyone looks okay. Just shaken up, mostly. Well, that's good to hear, at least. Then okay, let's get this woman in another room and start the wedding. Hello there, Olga. I was just curious if you settled down. Yes, I've calmed down, and I just wanted to say how sorry I am about earlier. I guess I just got excited and started seeing red, and the next thing I knew, I was in this room. Well, that's okay. The good thing is that you didn't hurt anyone and you're perfectly safe where you are. 
How can you be so calm in a situation like this? I mean, I ran into your wedding, caused a scene, scared everyone. I'm just amazed you even want to talk to me. Well, I just couldn't bring myself to throw you out without hearing your reasoning for doing all of this. Would you mind telling me exactly what brought you here today? By the way, I'm talking to you through text since I think everyone else here at the wedding basically insists that it was safe this way. I know, but even giving me your number like this, uh, don't you think that that's risky, too? I know that you were causing a scene, but I'm not sure if that alone makes you a dangerous person. After all, you didn't really break anything and nobody was hurt in the end. In fact, I think you were trying to make sure that you didn't hurt anyone. And so I just can't call someone with that much forethought and consideration a dangerous person. But I just don't get how you're so calm right now. You must have some idea by now of why I came here, but I am sorry for causing that scene I did. I just... I can't forgive my husband for cheating on me the way he did. Well, I suppose the calmness just came with my job. After all, I am a counselor by profession. So I guess I'm good at keeping my cool while others are going through crises of their own, even if I have my own crisis going on as well. And I wouldn't call this a crisis, but I do have a lot going on right now. Wait a second, you're a counselor? You mean that you're not a housewife? No ma'am, I'm not a housewife. And as for cheating, well, I can't think of any time that I've ever slept with someone who I knew was already in a relationship. But that can't be right. I have proof that I gathered as far back as six months ago of you and my husband. I have photos and everything. I see. Well, do you mind if I ask just where these photos were taken? They are from different spots, all where you two were going out on dates together. It's clearly you in the photo. There's no doubt about it. You're wearing a really nice designer skirt in some of them. An expensive skirt, huh? Would you mind giving me a moment? Also, just a quick question. In the photos, was my hair brown? Yes, your hair was brown in these photos. Well, I think you should know that I don't have brown hair. And my hair is rather black. And since I have sensitive skin, I've never dyed my hair. I'm sorry, but just saying that isn't going to make me believe you. You still could have dyed your hair black or something. That is true. But I am telling you that I've never taken part in any affair at any time in my life. That I swear to you. But, but even if that were true, my husband still cheated on me. I have the photos. That may be true, but I am only trying to tell you that you've got the wrong person. It isn't me in those photos. But after hearing your story, I think I might have an idea of what is going on here. Basically, you were looking for a housewife with brown hair and an expensive taste in clothing, right? I suppose so. When you put it like that... And the woman is also someone who looks strikingly like you. But are you telling me there's someone out there who fits that description? That is exactly what I'm telling you. Wow, that was a real mess. But at least the wedding is finally over, so congrats on that and on finally being married. I have to say, though, that wedding was a lot more lively and exciting than I thought the original was going to be. <laughs> I mean, who would have ever expected all of that to happen? By the way, what did you end up doing with that crazy lady? Well, I talked to her. That's all. I still can't believe that you would even go so far as to do that for her. I really think that you should have just kicked her out without giving her the time of day. I understand that, but the woman was quite distressed and not for no reason either. I just knew that her and I had to talk so that I could try and calm her down and explain to her how she was mistaken. And I think the woman actually got a lot out of our conversation. You think that crazy lady was listening to anything that other people were telling her? I don't know, I think she just wanted attention. But hey, you insisted on talking to her, and you did, so more power to you, I guess. Sorry, you're still missing all the important details here. What we talked about was this affair that had upset her so much. In fact, we even agreed to meet up outside the wedding and chat about this again. And we're going to have the cheating woman herself there, too. Wait a second. You mean that you were the cheater that the lady was screaming about? No, Anne. It wasn't me that she was looking for. It was you. You were sleeping with this woman's husband and she mistook me for you. Wait, what? Are you crazy? I haven't slept with anyone's husband. Please, why even pretend to play dumb about this right now? I already know the whole truth. 
There is no point in hiding anything. Wait a second. You aren't going to tell me that you really think I was sleeping with some lady's husband, do you? Or is this your way of trying to accuse others of a crime that you committed? No, it's not either. It's just a fact. You were sleeping with Olga's husband. The haircut, makeup, build, face. It was all you. You have some real nerve sleeping with my husband, you rat! Wait, Lisa, is that you? Why did you start talking to me like that? It's not Lisa, it's Olga. You know, the wife of the man you were having your affair with? You mean this is the crazy lady that barged into my sister's wedding? That's right, the very lady. And let me be the first to apologize for the scene that I made earlier today. But I only hope that my actions showed just how desperate of a mental state I was in. I had actually been in the hospital. I was so shocked to find out that my husband was cheating. And so what? What does this have to do with me? It sounds to me like you were looking for my big sister, not me. I think we both know that isn't true. You see, your sister explained a lot to me during our conversation, and she also explained how often you two get mixed up for each other. Wait a second, this is ridiculous. You're telling me that you made a mistake and thought I was my sister? Well, what if you're just making a mistake about all of this? Because I know that I didn't do any of what you're saying I did. Well, then do you care to explain how it is that you showed up in all these photos I've collected? You and my husband together, that is? And just what did you think was going to happen when this came to light? Did you really think that your affair was going to be a secret forever? Listen to me, lady. I do not have to sit here and read message after message from some total crazy butt like you. You're telling me that you're going to try and get your revenge? What can you even do, huh? I know that you think I'm only capable of running around and creating a scene like I did earlier, but after talking to your sister, I finally know what I should do. And just what is that that you think you should do, huh? Well, obviously I'm going to sue you for the affair you were having with my husband. After all, I'm clearly going to gain more from that than just causing a ruckus. That's actually what we were all going to talk about tomorrow. I was going to invite everyone involved to talk divorce and lawsuits. And so I really do hope that you can make it there. After all, you're going to be the star of the show. But I... Are you kidding me? There's no way I would ever actually show up to something like that. And just who do you think you are to act all high and mighty when you nearly ruined my sister's wedding? If anyone should be getting sued, it's you. Well, I've already talked with Lisa about that, and she said that she isn't going to be pressing charges. She told me not to worry about that and just to focus on you instead. You mean that my sister was really just willing to let what you did go? But what was she thinking? I would worry less about that and more about what you're going to say tomorrow. See you then. Hey, Anne. You know that you were supposed to be here already, right? We're all ready to start talking. No, there's no way I'm actually going to go and face all those people like this. You can't make me. Well, you should know that your husband and our parents are here right now. But not a single one of them are here to take your side in this. You mean that they're all mad at me for what I did? Then that makes me want to go even less. Why would I go there if everyone is just going to be so mad at me? Why would I go if I'm just going to be told that I'm going to be sued for what I did? Anne, you are acting like a child right now. You need to learn to accept responsibility for your actions. But I didn't even do anything that horrible. Why can't Olga just divorce her husband and be done with this? It's not just Olga that might be getting divorced here. Your husband isn't happy to find out about this either, you know? He is also talking about getting a divorce from you and suing you just like Olga is. And quite frankly, I don't think that I can blame either of them for feeling that way about what you've done to them. But this isn't fair. Everyone cheats sometimes, right? It's not actually that big of a deal, is it? Even if my husband cheated on me, I don't think that I would be treating him like this. Well, that may be how you feel about it from where you're standing, but you can't exactly call yourself the victim in all of this either, can you? And besides, even if that is how you feel about this, that isn't how your husband feels. And he has rights in this situation too, you know. More than that, you really hurt him. 
He was so shocked to hear about what you had done, and he never once thought that you would betray him like this. But it's not like I don't love him. I love my husband with all my heart. Oh, really? Because that isn't the sense I've gotten when you've talked about him. In fact, a while ago, you were telling me all about how being able to marry Rich was the most important thing when looking for a partner. You would always brag about how much money your husband made, but you never bragged about how happy he made you or how loved you felt being with him. You can't do this. You can't just twist my words against me like this. It isn't fair. You're just assuming my emotions. Oh, please. I'm not assuming anything. After all, you did cheat on your husband, and that's a fact. It's clear now that you're just trying to make up excuses to get out of the trouble you're about to find yourself in now. How can you not be taking my side right now? We're sisters! You're supposed to be my friend. I can't believe you're treating me like some kind of criminal. You know, I think that the way you're acting right now is just pathetic. I wish you could just accept responsibility for what you've done. Haven't you put everyone here through enough already? You need to act your age and stop keeping us all waiting! Get over here right now, Anne. Or else. After that, Anne realized that she had nothing to gain and everything to lose from not showing up to the talk. She arrived and it wasn't long before she had burst into tears and was begging everyone for forgiveness. Although in exchange, she only offered up excuses for her behavior. We couldn't believe she was being so self-centered in the end, and no one said anything to console her. In the end, she realized nobody was going to step in to defend her and that she could either settle with her husband and Olga now for her affair or deal with them as two separate lawsuits. Needless to say, Anne and her husband did not stay together. In the end, Anne had to spend every cent she had to pay off those two. She was also kicked out of her house by her husband and was ultimately forced to move into a tiny, cramped apartment and take on multiple jobs just to be able to take care of herself and keep up with her expenses. As for Olga... She took the money that she got from her settlement with Anne and used it to hire a lawyer so that she could finally divorce her husband. Of course, Oka also sued her husband for cheating on her as well, and so by the time the whole thing was over, Oka was well compensated for all the pain she had been put through by her sister and her husband. She thanked me very much for all my help, and we still keep in touch and go out for coffee now and then. After that, Anne begged me for help with money and finding a place to live and those sorts of things, but I never gave her anything. Even my parents told Anne that she needed to quit asking for help and learn to take responsibility for her own life. A little while after that, we all got letters of apology from Anne and that was the last that we ever heard from her. I asked people who might have known what happened to my sister, but no one knew where she ran off to. She had no one who wanted to help her and in the end wanted to start a new life in a new city. I have no idea where she is now. And quite frankly, I don't really care. I just hope that Anne manages to get her life together if for no other reason so that she never puts anyone else through what she put Olga through again. Hey Zara, make sure dinner's ready for when I get back. It's been a long day at work and I want to be able to eat and relax when I get back. I don't want to have to be waiting around again whilst you try and sort it out, or worse yet, pull myself again. Um, I understand that you might have had a tough day at work, but I'm not sure if I'll be able to have anything ready by the time you get back. What? Why not? Well, I've been busy today, too. In fact, I still am. I'm not sure I'll have time to make something for dinner before you're back. I'm sorry, baby, but that's just the truth. Maybe we could order in or something? There's that nice Chinese place just down the road. No, I'm not ordering in. I don't want to spend money on food when we've got perfectly good stuff to eat at home. You just need to get off of your lazy butt and actually do something for once. Excuse me? What do you mean I need to stop being so lazy? I'm nothing of the sort. Well, that's just not true now, is it? What do you mean? How am I in any way lazy and unhelpful? How can you think that you're not? You don't have a job anymore because you've been fired, so you don't bring any money into the house and you've gotten incredibly fat. That's what happens to lazy people. Okay, first off, I haven't been fired. I'm on maternity leave, you know, for our baby, which also explains why I've gotten so big. Again. Growing a human inside of you generally makes you gain a few pounds. And? You know, you could still clean the house or cook and make sure everything's in order and ready for when the husband, you know, me, gets home. Seriously, it can't be that hard. All you need to do is actually put some effort into it and you could be a pretty good housewife. I'm sorry? That's okay. No. I mean, I'm sorry because I had no clue that when I married you, I had signed up to become your bloody housemaid. 
Well, what'd you expect? To just sit at home and do whatever you wanted? Spend all my hard-earned money on trivial junk and not even give anything back in return? The least you could do is clean up and cook. Do you even hear yourself? You sound so sexist right now. I actually can't believe it. And for your information, I do clean up around the house. Way more than you do. You can't even be bothered to put your underwear in the wash at the end of the day. The hamper's right in the bedroom too. But no. You just dump everything on the floor and expect me to sort through all of your dirty stuff and clean up after you. Well, in case you haven't noticed, I'm not your mom and you're not five years old anymore. If you want a maid, then you can hire one. I'm not wasting my money on hiring a maid when you're more than capable of tidying up whilst I'm at work. You have nothing else to do all day, so I don't see why it's such a big deal. I don't know where you've got this idea that I don't do anything all day, but it's not true. And even if I do do very little, I think it's acceptable considering I'm literally supposed to go into labor any day now. Meaning I'm technically on bed rest so as not to hurt myself or the baby. Whatever. Oh, actually, you just reminded me of something. What? My mom's coming to live with us when the baby's born. She's moving in over the next few days, so you'll need to sort the spare bedroom out for her to stay in. Hang on. What? Why is your mom coming to live with us? Because I asked her to. Why would you ask your mom to come and live with us? Um, because I want my kid to have a proper role model to look up to as he grows up, and I also want to make sure that he's taken care of properly. My mom is more than happy to do that. But I am our baby's mother. I am the one who will look after him and do whatever needs to be done in order to make sure that he has a happy and healthy life. Well, I don't think you will. Besides, my mom was the one who decided that she wanted to do this, and I was not about to deny her this opportunity. Opportunity? This is my baby. I am not about to let someone else come in and raise him instead of me, even if it is your mom. Just think of it this way, you can go and get your job back and start earning money again, and mom can look after the baby. Everyone wins. Um, no, they don't, because I don't get to spend time with my son. Look, I really can't be bothered to deal with your whining and crying. This is what is going to happen. Get over it. I mean, face it, at the end of the day, I'm the one earning all the money to pay for the house and the bills and whatever else you want, so you have to do what I say and accept whatever I decide. In this case, it's letting my mom move in with us and look after the baby. Now, I'm done with this discussion. Make sure you have dinner ready. I'll be back soon. I really don't know where you get off on acting like such a jerk. If I had known you were going to be like this, I never would have married you. I'm not being like anything. You're the one being selfish and stubborn. You know what? You can cook your own dinner. I'm going out to eat. I won't be here when you get back. Don't you dare. You can't go out. You've got to make my dinner. I forbid you. Too bad. I'm not your dog, nor your maid. I can do what I want, which also includes taking care of my baby by myself. We'll see about that. I guess we will, won't we? I'm going. I'll see you later. Hey, Mom. You there? Hey, sweetie. What's up? Are you free to meet up? Um, when were you thinking? Now, if possible? Yeah, sure. I think I can do that. How come you want to meet up so suddenly? Has something happened? It's Kyle. He's just been such a huge ass. I really could do with someone to talk to. I thought maybe we could go for some food, if you're up for it. Yeah, of course. God, he must have done something bad if you need to head out for a while. Oh, you have no idea. He literally just messaged me demanding that I make his dinner for him and have it ready for when he gets back home. It's like he was expecting me to be a 1950s housewife, waiting at the front door with dinner in one hand and a beer in the other. Geez, that does sound kind of sexist. Yeah, but that's not the worst part. He said that his mom is moving in with us so that she can take care of the baby when it's born. Can you believe that? She's apparently going to be taking my job of being a mother away from me whilst I go and get a job to earn money. Hang on, but he does know that you are the baby's mom, right? Why does he want his mom there? He said that he trusts her more than me to take care of our baby. That's just wrong though. You're one of the kindest and most caring people I've ever met. And I'm not just saying that because you're my daughter. You would love that baby with your whole heart and do the best you possibly could for him. 
You can't just take that away from you. Besides, I'd be there to help you out if and when you need it as well. Well, I don't know what to do. Okay, I think you need to have a chat with his mom and tell her that whilst it was a nice thought, you would prefer it if she didn't move in with you and that if you need her help, you will be sure to call her. Do you really think that will work? You can only try and hope for the best. But I'm always here if you need me for any reason. I know you are, Mom. Thank you. I love you. I love you too, sweetie. Okay, well, I'll see you soon for dinner, but I'm just going to try and have that chat with Susan. The sooner the better, right? Right. I'll see you at the restaurant then. See you soon. Hi, Susan. It's Zara. I hope you're well. Kyle's just told me about your idea to come and live with us to help out with the baby. I'm really flattered that you want to be there for us, but I think moving in isn't really necessary. I'm sure if I could use your expertise, I will call you up. But for now, I think I'd just like to focus on my son by myself, if you know what I mean. Zara, yes. My son told me that you might be messaging me about all of this. Ah, so he feels the same way? Of course not. My son wants me to move in with him so that I can actually look after his son instead of leaving it to an incompetent imbecile such as yourself. I mean, honestly, you've never had a child before, so you have absolutely no idea how to care for one. Every woman has to be a first-time mom at some point, and the majority of those get by perfectly fine. I'm sure I'll be okay as well. If I need help, then I will ask you or my own mother. But until then, I want my house to remain as my house, and I don't want you coming in and trying to take over it. Well, that's too bad. You can be as ungrateful as you want, but I am moving in and I am raising that baby. You really aren't, Susan. Yes, I really am. And if you don't believe me, you can ask your husband about it. Now, if you don't mind, I am packing the last of my things up, ready to move in. You better have cleaned out that spare room for me. Lord knows you usually keep the house like a pigsty. No, I don't. And if you want to stay in the guest room, then you're going to have to clear it out yourself. What? Right, that's it. My son will be hearing all about how you have treated me today. Mark my words. I don't care. Now, goodbye, Susan. Kyle, quick, I need your help. I'm going into labor and I really need to get to the hospital. What, right now? Can't you hold it or something? I'm in the middle of a really important meeting. It doesn't work like that. Well, I'm sorry, but you're gonna have to get to the hospital by yourself. Like I said, I'm in a very important meeting and I can't leave. Kyle, I am having the baby. Now. Yes, you said. But there's nothing really I can do about that, is there? Whatever. I'm going to go and have this baby whether you're there or not. Fine by me. Zara, how dare you talk to my mom the way you did? I can't believe you would be so disrespectful. Just who do you think you are? Now that you're done giving birth, hurry up and get home. I'm about to teach you a lesson. My daughter has stopped talking to you. Huh? Who is this? It's me, Kyle. Zara's mom. I'm currently at the hospital with my daughter, and she has told me to tell you that she no longer wishes to speak to you. Also... She's moving out of the house, and she's divorcing you. Wait, what? Sh she can't do that. Actually, yes, she can. But why? I'm her husband. She can't just decide that she doesn't want to be with me. How can you call yourself her husband when you don't act like one? Proper husband would be right beside his wife as she gave birth to their first child. Not held up in some meeting that he could have easily gotten away from. Also... A proper husband wouldn't just invite his mother to live with him and his wife without discussing it with her first. Zara has had enough. She simply can't deal with your selfish and sexist ways anymore. She's done with you. Well, fine, but you tell her this. When she comes running to beg me to take her back, there will be a few conditions before I do. Mainly, she'll have to stop being lazy and start actually helping out around the house. I'll be expecting a proper clean home and dinner most nights. Once her tamper tantrum is over, we can finally get things to how they're supposed to be. You're going to be in for a rude awakening. There's nothing in this world that will make her want to go back to you. We'll see. Whatever. 
Zara will send the paperwork to you when she can. But for now, she and the baby will be staying with me. Whatever, just try not to let this tantrum last too long. My mom will be wanting to have the baby to look after very soon. Hey Zara, you done ignoring me yet? My mom has moved in and she's getting impatient to see the baby. You also need to get back to work ASAP. Zara? Oh, it's you. What do you want? Did you not see my messages? It's time my mom had the baby. Actually, no. I don't think it is time for that. In fact, it will never be time for that, considering I'm divorcing you and all. You're not serious about that, are you? Of course I am. I've already told you, I'm not coming back to you. I'm living with my mom at the moment, but I'm looking for a new place that I can move into with Freddy. Hang on a moment. Yeah, I'm way too busy to be your maid anymore. Looks like you're going to have to stop being lazy and actually get up off of your backside for once. Wait, 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 P please come back, Zara. I, I mean, you can't just take my son from me. We can work this all out, surely. No, thanks. You've shown your true colors, and I'm not interested in your horrible, sexist behavior. I mean, trying to keep me away from my son is just ridiculous. I can't believe you would try and do that to me. There's no way I was letting that happen. Anyway, I've got to go. Freddy is due to wake up any minute for a feed. I'll be sending the divorce papers through soon. Goodbye, Kyle. I hope you have a nice life with your mom. Wait, wait, Zara, please. After splitting up from Kyle, I felt as if a weight had been lifted from my shoulders. I was able to happily take care of my baby without worrying that someone else was going to try and come along and take him from me. I have been doing really well raising Freddy, and whilst it's not easy, I have had help off of my mom when I needed it. As for Kyle, I heard that his mom refuses to move out of his house and that she is driving him crazy with her behavior. He is constantly being told what to do and how to live. So much so that he is apparently looking for a new place to live, according to a friend who lives close by. But I don't care. At the end of the day, he made his decision to treat me like rubbish, and so I can be rid of him. If he asks to see his son, then I won't stop him, as he is his father and has a right to see him. However, he has yet to make that request. So, until then, me and Freddy will simply live happily together.